From 1999 to 2001, a debate took place in the news, in the courtroom, and in the hearts of America's young people. A debate that would revolutionize the music industry and the internet. At the center of this debate was a young college computer programmer named Sean Fanning and his creation, a computer program which was named Napster. In 1999, when most college kids were enjoying Christmas break, 17-year-old college freshman Sean Fanning spent hundreds of sleepless hours writing computer code. With every stroke of a key, he was stepping further into the unknown digital world of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. The computer program that he created allowed users to put their music on the internet and to download music from the internet, all for free. Free music at the click of a mouse. When Napster was launched in June 1999, College kids around America started downloading their favorite music tracks for free. Napster was so successful that it quickly overloaded Fanning's Pentium 100 Linux server. I released an early beta version of the Napster software during the summer and it spread quickly by word of mouth. It hasn't stopped growing since. Sean Fanning was attending college at Northeastern University in Boston. He became aware of something that American college students were begging for. My roommate in, in, in college was really into rap music and would download all sorts of obscure rap and he'd have his friends over on the weekends and we'd party and they were all interested in getting access to his music and, or figuring out how to get music in the same way that he did. But he put so much time into finding tracks, it was such a pain that he would skip class to do it. If he found a good site, he would, he would skip you know, an entire day worth of classes just to make sure he got everything he wanted. Sean Fanning saw an opportunity to do something new. He wrote computer code, dropped out of school, created Napster, and started a worldwide debate that changed music and the internet forever. Napster exploded on the internet. Suddenly, everyone was using Napster to share music in the form of computer MP3 files. The premise of Napster was brilliantly simple. Sign on to the Napster server and upload your music to the worldwide internet. Every song uploaded to the Napster server was then available for everyone else to download to their computer. The best part was that the Napster program never actually ever had possession of the copyrighted material. It only allowed songs to be transferred from peer to peer. File sharing. Sharing is good, right? Not everyone enjoyed the idea of free music. Napster soon came to the attention of the Recording Industry Association of America. While fans love the idea of free music, the recording industry, singers, songwriters, and musicians were not getting paid and felt that they were no longer in control of their product. The recording industry saw a threat. The issue exploded when a bootleg copy of brand new song by big name artist Metallica was available on Napster before it had even been released to the public. The Recording Industry Association of America, Metallica, and other artists launched a full out attack on Napster and the young creator Sean Fannin. Determined to stop free music, the opposition flooded Napster with lawsuits and took the debate into the courts. In 2000, Metallica launched the first of many lawsuits. Rapper and music producer Dr. Dre filed his lawsuit a month later. A&M Records and the Recording Industry Association of America soon added their lawsuits against Napster. The basis for the Recording Industry's lawsuits came down to one major claim. Copyright Infringement under the United States Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Napster claimed that its program never had copyrighted files, but only allowed the exchange of files, and they were therefore exempted from any copyright infringement. The record companies argued that Napster contributed and facilitated copyright infringement that caused a theft of intellectual property and great financial harm. Napster lost their case in district court and appealed for their cause to the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit in Southern California. Napster lost the appeal and the company was ordered to make Napster conform to copyright law. Since supplying free music was the reason Napster was created, the company was unable to comply with the court's ruling and Napster went offline in July of 2001. Buried by the lawsuits, Napster declared bankruptcy and sold all of its assets, including the Napster name. Sean Fanning continues to be a successful computer programmer and entrepreneur. While the recording industry had won in the legal system, they lost billions in the court of public opinion. 
the music sharing sites that multiplied after Napster had learned from the Napster case and had learned how to avoid the legal ramifications and the RIAA. The RIAA could no longer shut all of them down. The world had had a taste of free music and things would never be the same. The music industry was forced to rethink their business models and embrace the digital world. For the first time, they began to focus on the internet for music sales. In addition, they had alienated a good portion of their client base. Artists and music companies had to practice careful diplomacy and salesmanship to win back a fraction of the music downloading public. In its two short years of existence on the internet, Napster was able to create a firestorm of controversy and debate. Napster forced everyone to examine their 21st century ethics. When is sharing actually stealing? It completely changed the future of music publishing and led to the development of paid music sharing sites. The Napster debate also changed the way we buy and listen to music. The popular iPod, iPhone, and iTunes owe their success to the innovations created by Napster. Today, music lovers can download their song choices legally from many online music companies, including the completely revamped and now legal Napster. The debate over peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, intellectual property rights, and the technology involved will continue. In the meantime, music lovers will find a way to get their tunes. Napster started something that cannot be stopped. The world owes a great deal to the Napster debate. Rock on, world!